Uncle Hoosh's hat. Hey guys, welcome back to Harrison Hacks. Today I have an SNES Classic Edition uh, video for you. Basically, I've got my SNES Classic running on a USB drive, uh, so that way I have the USB host enabled uh, with some extra games. Um, I haven't gone crazy yet. Uh, what I mostly wanted to focus was not on the extra games today, but all of the extra firmwares that are installed. So right now, you can see by the uh, artwork in the background, I am on the SNES Classic USA firmware. Now built right in. I'm going to click Famicom. So instead of it being just Famicom games on the SNES Classic firmware, this is the actual Famicom firmware. There's five systems included. Um, this is a little boot video splash screen. I installed the H mod for that. Um, this is a work in progress, but everything seems to be working perfectly. So you can see here, um, within, now we're in the actual Famicom um, firmware. So I just have all the original games for Famicom. And we can just keep going through systems. So I've gotten, we'll go to Nintendo next. Then we have Super Famicom, back to the US Super Nintendo, and then we have Super Nintendo Europe. So let's go to the Nintendo. So for, for my uh, SNES Classic, whether it be the US or the European firmwares, I only do a maximum of 60 games uh, per folder. I never go over 60 items per folder. In this instance, I'm not even using folders. I just have 60 games um, in the SNES US. And the NES, I do 90. Um, I've heard people do up to 100, but I just go up to 90 because I never have any issues. Let me just turn the camera a little bit. So this is as if we're booting up the NES Classic for the first time. Um, but I've added a bunch of games in here that I like to play. So 90 total. And the 90, um, I know the camera sometimes likes to uh, um, auto-adjust. And I don't have setting on my phone. So sorry about that. Um, all the games do work too. I should be showing you guys that as well. So. Here's one running through the NES Classic uh, emulator. And I'll get one that doesn't. So Super Mario Duck Hunt does not. So instead of saying loading, it says RetroArch loading. But everything works perfectly. And each and every system I've gone through and tested games just as I showed you now. Um, no issues at all. Everything runs. So I've showed you Famicom. Um, I've showed you the American um, Super Nintendo, so let's go to Super Famicom. And you'll see no signal, but that's just your SNES Classic just quickly resets itself. Um, I think I'm going to use a static image for my boot. I did the video, but if I'm going to continue with the five system um, setup, which I'm not sure that I am. I just wanted to prove a concept. I want to see, is this going to work? And it works great, um, to be quite honest. So now you can see we're in the Super Famicom. And all the original games are there. I have not done the English translation or anything like that on this. Uh, I left it stock. So we've done Famicom, Super or Nintendo. We've done Super Nintendo US. We've done Super Famicom. So lastly, we'll do Super Nintendo Europe. And it has the same games as the um, SNES US, but it does have slightly different background artwork. So I wanted to show you guys that all five systems are working within one system. And I'm doing this through USB host. If, I'm not sure if you could do this on NAND, just uh, I'm not sure if there's enough space, but if you could, that, that's pretty, you know, that'd be pretty awesome. So here we go. Okay. And you can see now we're in the Super Nintendo European uh, firmware. And this one, I just have all the original games. I didn't add anything. The only thing that I added to was Nintendo, 
in Super Nintendo US. Um, so this is pretty cool. So this gave me an idea. What I want to do is, I know there's no like Sega Genesis firmware or TurboGrafx-16 firmware, but I want to figure out how I could add those systems, but have their own artwork in the background so that I could, um, every system has its own look and feel to it. Um, you know, I know it's only slight variances other than like Super Famicom looks pretty different and Famicom looks pretty different. Um, so I'd like to, I'm going to try and figure out how to do that with other consoles. And then if I figure it out, I'm not sure. I mean, there's guys out there that do a ton of work on this kind of stuff, um, that are, you know, far more knowledgeable than I am. But if I figure it out, I'll definitely, uh, release a pack, um, with all the artwork and then you got, and then, uh, obviously I'll do a how to video and show you guys how to fix it all and make it all function properly. So I just wanted to show this off. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, this is an SNES classic. And I'm just going to move the camera real quick. So it's just my SNES classic. US edition. I'm using the 8 bit controller. Love that controller. The SNES 30. And then I have the Allegiant um, OTG adapter. So you can see my power comes in right there and then my USB stick is right there and then I have two more ports which I will be doing some testing on different USB controllers to see what works USB adapters with other controllers so on and so forth so as usual uh, I really appreciate everybody watching please hit that like button subscribe to the channel and most importantly have a good day